Hello, today I will be showing you how to fold this origami kingfisher. Um, it's relatively medium level, it's not easy, it's not too difficult. If you know folding techniques, then you can definitely fold this. Um, also, the stand for it is made out of Lego. <laughs> Anything that that works really you can use. It's just that I found that this worked very well. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So I use a 20 by 20 centimeter piece of dark blue paper, since that is the color of the common kingfisher. Um, but you can use smaller if you have the skill for it, or bigger if you have trouble with smaller paper. Uh, this paper is about, uh, I think, 80 GSM, which is a bit heavy for origami paper, but it's not, it's not like 100 GSM paper. So uh, first we're going to be folding along the diagonal. Then we are going to unfold and take the other diagonal and just crease it in the middle, not fold it all the way. We're just going to crease it like that. And then you can unfold so you have this crease here. Now uh, take the end here and fold it so that it's on the crease in the middle. And then here, we are also only going to crease. And then you unfold and then you fold the edge on this crease that we did just before. Now you can fold it all the way and flip the paper over. You should end up with this. Now we are going to take the edge here and fold along by sector angle for the crease in the center, like such. Like this, basically. Um, then you fold this edge against the edge of the paper over here, as precisely as possible once again. And then you fold the edge back against the edge here. But not, not both layers, only the top layer. Now you unfold the this flap, not the not the first flap, but the second flap, so that you end up with this. And then you fold the edge here along the crease that's here. Like such. Now we are going to uh, take the this end and do the same thing that we did before on this side. So we fold this edge here along by sector angle. Like such. And then you take the edge here and fold it along this edge. Now you take this edge here, or the first flap, basically the edge of the first flap, and fold it along this edge here. And then you unfold the second flap and fold the edge here against the crease that's here. You should end up with this shape. Now we're going to unfold this on each side, the flap here on each side. Don't flatten it too much so that the creases are still apparent. Now flip the paper over and uh, this we're going to um, unfold it 
flip the paper over, we can fold it back just to make sure that the crease is in front And now we're going to take the edge here and fold it along the crease that is here. When doing so, make sure that it's straight. You can do that by looking that this forms a straight line here, the crease. And that um, the, the edges of this crease here continue along the crease that's here and here. There, now you can unfold this, flip the paper over, unfold this flap, and reverse fold the crease that was done here, that we just did. And you should end up with this. Now, uh, we can basically fold the creases that we did here before. So, you know, you flip the paper over, uh, fold this here along the crease, basically, that we did before. And then we do it underneath the crease that we did before, and then over. Now, here is a crease that we did not do yet. Well, we did it, but it's in the wrong way around. So we can flip the paper over and fold this flap over here so that um, the, the edge of the bottom flap will be on top of the new flap that we just did, that we're doing now. Basically like this. And then we can flip the paper over and do the same thing. Then you flip it over and do the same thing. Now we do the same thing on this side. So we flip it, we fold it upwards, then downwards, then upwards. And then we flip it over and we can reverse fold this part along the edge, basically. Then we flip it over, increase it along the edge of the previous flaps. Now we are going to flip it over and also fold it along the edge here. You should end up with this, with a, a flap that's sticking out here and then all this um, paper folded over itself. Now we're going to stretch out this part, make it flat. We can hold it like this, and then we're going to open this and reverse fold the, the part that's here so that it basically goes downwards like this. Then when you fold it over, it um, basically does that. When we do the same thing upwards with the next fold, we're also going to reverse so that it ends up like this and etc. and etc so that we have uh, the same the same thing that we had before here. Like such, then like such. Make sure that it's on the crease that we did before, just reversed. Then again, and then again. So that you have this here, and then it should look like this on the edge, so that you have this. Now, same thing with this side, so you outstretch it, and then you fold it inwards, reverse folding it on this side. Put it a bit closer. You make sure it's flat, and then you do the same thing up, and then down, 
and then up and down and then for the last time back up you should end up with this now we're going to take the edge here and fold it so that it's on top of this edge up here now you should have this now we're going to uh, take the edge here and fold it even further until it's tugging against the edge here. Make sure that it's flat on the edge there so that you, you see before you had this, now we are flipping it upwards so that we have this. Now do the same thing with all the other ones or the, the two others on this side. So you take the, the dip here and you flip it upwards so that it lies along the the top edge here and that it does a kind of a pointy thing here and same thing on the next one over so that you end up with this now we flip it over and we do the same thing here so we pull the edge here upwards then you're going to take the dip here and fold it upwards so that the edge lies flush with the the top edge over there like such and then the next one over now you should have on each side this shape like like this okay now i can flatten it just to make sure that everything's all right and uh, you can open it up inside here and now we're going to reverse fold this area here. We're going to fold it inwards like this. And you can flatten it so that it ends up like that. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see. Then same thing with the next one. So we fold it inwards. It's like that. And then the next one over. And then the last one, you can unfold it so that it still has this pointy shape at the end. Since the last one, we're gonna have to use it for something else. Same thing on this side. So you open it up and you reverse fold. So you basically put it inwards. Same thing for the next one. Make sure that it's nice and along the edges. one you can just do the same thing but then pop it back out so that you end up with this no, no more spikes just one spike at the very top and that's it then you can flatten it again to make sure that everything goes well now you're gonna have to fold this uh, the top flap down and fold the point here inward so that the edge is on the crease that's in the center here and as far as possible until it catches here that's when you're supposed to stop it so that it's like this same thing on this side so you basically fold it inwards so that it's on the line there and stops here then you're going to fold the flap back up you can flatten it all to make sure that everything's all right and you should end up with this here you can look, no more points at all, only the edge. And that's it. Now, we um, just to make sure that this crease is correct, we're going to fold it in half. Like this, and then you can unfold. Now, you can take the edge here and fold it so that the um, this, this uh, edge here, not the entire paper, only the flaps here, so that their edge is a folded along by sector angle of this edge. Like such. And same thing on this side. Like such. 
such. Now we're going to fold it along the other diagonal. So we take this edge here, this uh, corner, and we fold it along that corner. Basically normal diagonal. And since we folded the edges of the flaps, it should be easier than if we hadn't done it. Like such. Then you unfold. Now you can flip the paper over. And we're now going to uh, basically fold so that this edge here, or this uh, crease, is along the crease in the center here. While keeping this side correct. So you can press this one so that you make sure it doesn't fly around. And then you basically fold like this until the center here. You can flatten it. Now you're going to take the edge here and fold it so that it's on top of this edge, basically doing another crease here. like such, and then same thing with this side. So you, you take it inwards, you make sure this is nice and flat, fold it inwards, fold it until the center and then push that flat back and put that in. This looks a lot like the beginning of the bird base, the, the shape that we have here, except that there's a lot of stuff here and flaps along the edges here. Make sure this is nice and flat on the top, that there aren't any ir irregularities. Now we can flip it over so that it's flat, the flat side, the, the, what am I saying, the flat side with nothing on it. And we're going to take the edge here and fold it along the center here, center crease, so that it does a bisector angle fold. If you find it easier, you can move this out of the way so that it doesn't impact your folding. But you don't have to if you're able to do it, the fold with uh, the flap in the way. Same thing on this side. So you can move that out of the way and then you put you, you uh, fold the flap inwards towards the middle. So you end up with this. Now you can unfold these and then pull the flap here open and reverse these inwards, exactly like you would do on a normal bird base. You should end up with this shape. Now you can fold this flap upwards just to to make sure this is nice and, and flat, that it works well, then you can fold it back down. Now we are going to but basically you know that you can notice that this side is exactly like the normal bird base. Now we can flip it over and do the same thing on this side. So you end up with a normal bird base except that there is tons of stuff here on the front. So we fold the edge here on the center crease so that it forms a bisector angle fold. Make it nice and flat. Same thing on this side. You can maybe, maybe unfold this side when you do that, just to make sure that it's nice and precise. Same on this side, you should end up with this. Then you unfold those two, open the big, big flap that's here, and then you can reverse fold these flaps inwards. like such. Then you do the same here. And 
make sure it's nice and flat by flattening everything. And then you should have something that's a bit like a bird base. You can uh, do the normal fold like that, just to make sure that everything's flat again. Now you should end up with this. This is where things get more interesting when we actually start making the Kingfisher. Now you can fold this flap here upwards and flatten it so that you have this shape. Now you're going to fold this in half along the crease in the center here so that you have this. Now you can take the, the first flap here and fold it upwards like such. Now um, take the edge here, the, 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 um, the first flap only, and fold it along the crease here so that it does another bisector angle fold. It should end up like this. Now fold it so that, um, basically fold the edge here so that it's straight with this edge here like such, and then you can flatten it. Now you can uh, fold this part upwards like that so that it uh, blocks against the two edges here and there. Like this basically. And then you can slightly fold it a bit back so you have access to these flaps here so that you can open them up, like such. And then you can basically, when you uh, fold it downwards and open the flaps at the same time, you should have this shape. Same thing on this side. So you pull it, plop it out, and then you flatten it down. You should end up with something that looks like this. With this will be the future wing. Now, um, this part may be difficult or at least it's going to be hard to explain. You can uh, open this here so that when you flatten it, it will do a crease like that and that it stops on the edge here. Same thing with the next one. Wait, let's open the one like that. Same thing with the next one. Same thing with the next one. And then you can flatten it and when you flatten it, just make sure that this is straight and that it isn't slightly curved because of all the pressure that's uh, on the paper. Then you should have this. Now you can fold it back up like this. Now you have the shape of the wing. And now you're going to crease from here, from this point here, to this point here. like such. Then you can fold it downwards along the, uh, the, the edge of the flap here so that it looks like this. Then you can flip over and do the same thing on this side. So you fold the flap up, you fold the first flap along the crease here to make a bisector angle fold. Make sure it's nice and flat as you do so. And then you fold the edge here so that it's flush with the edge there. Flatten it to make sure it's, it works well. And then you can fold this back along from there to there. Now you can fold it back slightly, pop out the flaps, flatten it to make sure that there's no issues. Same thing on the other side. Should have this. Now we are going to open up this part here.
so that you have this. Then fold it back up, make sure it's flat. And then you can fold along the edge of the flap here. And for this one as reference point, you can even use the wing on the other side to make sure that it's symmetrical. And you unfold and uh, fold from here to here downwards. Like such, you can fold it back down here. So the wings are symmetrical normally. There should be no issues with the symmetricality of the wings if your folding was precise enough. If not, then it's not that much of a problem as long as it's not like a full two to three millimeters like this. Well, that's actually closer to five, but still. Now we are going to work on the tail a bit. So we can fold this flap down and then back up. We are going to take the edge here, the, the point here, and fold it so that it's on top of the edge of this flap here, and the basically the intersection between the end of this flap or this crease, and this these flaps are underneath the crease. So that it's like this. Then you unfold it, and we open these flaps here, and fold it so it's inwards along the crease that we just made. Like this. Then you can flip it over and just fold a bit of it upwards, a bit of the end of the tail upwards like this, just to make sure that it doesn't flap around like that. You can flatten it to make sure that everything's all right. Now you should have this. Now we are going to fold this flap down here. And uh, you can open this area a bit and crease from this point Basically, till, um, so that this edge here enters into contact with this crease here. Like such. So it's like this. Uh, same thing on the other side, so you can flatten that. Fold it again here to make sure it's flat. And they do then do the same thing here. So you can open here and then fold from this point basically like this until that is on top of the crease here. Then you can flatten it to make sure that everything's all right. You can fold it in half again. We should have this. Now we're going to unfold the flaps that are, the fold that we did here on this side first since the fold is older. And we're going to flip it and try to reach into the flap here. If you reach it only like the first, the like in the second layer and you have a border here, you know that you're in the wrong flap. You have to be in the absolute top one so that you can actually, if you take a ruler, so you can reach all the way into here with no problem. Now, uh, this step might be difficult. It's a, it's a, a sink fold. So you can open it here and basically reverse fold the lines that were here and here, and this should be on the correct side for that one. Make sure that it's on the creases that we did before. Now you can flatten it. You see there should be one thing here that sticks out a bit. If not, then it's better for you. If yes, then you can take just a pencil and kind of push the end here inwards or um, like this, basically. So you push this side down until when you flatten it, it doesn't poke out anymore and it's nice and flush with no issues whatsoever. Then 
um, you can do the same thing on the side. So just to make sure that the crease is still there, you can fold it back inwards and then fold it out or unfold it, flip it over, reach into the flap, the correct one hopefully, and then fold this inwards or do a sink fold basically. Make sure this is nice and flat. You can flatten it. Take a, a pencil or a pen to push the end here inwards a bit. You can also use your finger if it's easier for you. But if the pen is easier for you, then I recommend using that. Then you can flatten it. Make sure that there's nothing sticking out here. it's nice and flat everything works well there should be a bit of a some stuff here but that's okay it's perfectly normal and then you can uh, take the flap here and fold it upwards along the uh, the crease that's here basically that was there before and you should have this and if you look at it from the this side it should look like that uh, now you can fold it back in half Make sure that everything is symmetrical on top of each other on both sides. And you should have something that looks like this now, with this being the back. Now uh, we're going to start working on the head. So for that, we're going to um, take the flatten it, take the end here and fold it along so that's basically on top of here. You see the intersection between all these flaps and uh, just crease it. You don't have to, you don't have to fold it all the way just on the very end. Make sure that it's apparent. Maybe even you can take some tweezers and compress it. If you think that what you did wasn't uh, clear enough and then it will disappear as soon as you unfold it so that you have the crease here. You can flatten it a bit to make sure that it doesn't uh, do a shape like that. I should have the crease here, basically. Now we're going to fold this back. So we basically do a crease from here till the point here. You can take the wing out of the way like I just did, it helps a bit. Now it should look like this. You can flip it over and do the same thing on this side. So fold it back, uh, going through the two points. And now we're going to fold them both of them back at the same time so that it does this with the head. Now, uh, don't fold it all the way, fold it until you see that uh, the crease here stops right on top of uh, the, the edge of the flap there. Like this. Same thing on this side. Should be symmetrical though. like such. Now we are going to do another fold very similar to this on the head again. We are going to fold basically a bisector angle folds from this flap to this flap here, like this. Same thing on this side. So that basically it folds the entire head. Once you do it both of them at the same time, it pulls the entire head back. You can uh, push the head down if you have to. Like such, then you should have something of this shape. Now we're going to, uh, you can fold this flap slightly back so that you can have access to all of this. Now you're going to pull this flap out and fold it so that it does a crease from this point here all the way down to this point here. If you have trouble doing the, the fold, you can take a ruler as a reference point and then fold it along the ruler. 
and you can flatten it on this side to make sure that it works well. You can flip it over and do the same thing on this side. So take that back, take that, fold it, and then you should have this shape. You can flatten it to make sure that everything is, once again, symmetrical. You should have this now. Now we're going to uh, fold something on the tail. We're going to fold, basically do a crease from this point here all the way to this point here. Wait, let's see that better. This point, the intersection between the crease here, uh, which then morphs into the end of the flap and the flap here. Like this. Then you flip it over and do the same thing here. And then you can fold it down a bit so it's like this. If you want, you can open this up and then push the thing that's uh, that was excess inside. Like this. Now we are going to uh, work on the, the feet here before we do all the detailing on the head because that's quite a bit difficult. We're going to do a crease along the edge here. So it's basically from this point up until the point here, basically where the wing folds. Like such. Now we're going to uh, fold this edge of the flap here along this edge of the flap, so it does a bisector angle fold, like this. Then you can unfold that and do the same thing here. So, like this. Then you can unfold it, and uh, you're going to fold both of them at the same time so that it gives this shape. You can flatten it in a point here. Now you, we're going to twist it ever so slightly like downwards and upwards at the same time. So basically in this motion, like this, so that it gives this shape. And same thing on the side. So we do the fold from this point to this point. Then you can unfold, fold it again to make sure the crease is there. And then we can do the the creases, uh, the bisector angle folds, basically, on both ends. And then do them at the same time. So that it ends like this. And then we do the motion again, where we do it downwards and up at the same time. So that it gives this shape. You can fold it on top of the other to make sure that they're exactly the same level. This helps to make it more stable when you uh, want to display it, basically. Fold the wings forwards, make sure that everything is symmetrical once again. I said that too much. Now, onto the something. Well, it's not necessary. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But it does add a nice touch to the Kingfisher. It, uh, it's basically detailing on the head, it uh, adds the beak and uh, eyes, although the eyes aren't, aren't that apparent. So we will, so we have a crease, um, well, the end of flaps here that kind of stick out a bit. We are going to take it just a bit further back than that and fold open like that, and then kind of pull it down like this. And then you can pull it back up like this. So that you have this shape basically. Now we can uh, pull the beak together. This will be a reference point for when we do the eyes of where to stop. And we should have the beak like such. We can uh, you can take the end of a pen that's relatively roundish. Uh, it's basically not a, an octagonal pen or a square pen. You can push that in the head and then push the head on it to shape it a bit. 
make sure that it's a 3D head and not a 2D head. Or you can use your thumb. Say you're like this. Now you can uh, pull the beak out, back out. We're going to put it back in, it's just now we need it because of the reference point here. Sorry, I couldn't see that. The reference point here to uh, fold the eyes, basically. Now you can uh, take the first flap up here and fold it downwards so that it creates a crease from this point here until the end here. If this part is too difficult, which I can understand, um, you can just use tweezers, but I think it's not that detailed yet. It will be soon though. Uh, so now we take the next flap and basically uh, fold it down so that it goes against the top of this flap here, top of this flap. This one is a bit easier to use the tweezers with, just the beginning of it, and then the rest you can do it with your fingers. At the end, it will catch. You can just let it catch and let it curve a bit like that. That's perfectly normal. It's fine. It's the way it's supposed to be. So you have this shape. Now we turn it over and do the same thing here. So basically pull the flap down. And then uh, do the next one. So that it ends on top or kind of against the edge of the flap that we folded just before. When you do that, make sure that you don't accidentally unfold the flaps here because that could be a setback if it was very difficult for you to fold downwards in the first place. Now you should have this shape on each side. Uh, you can fold the beak back now on the same reference points that we used before. Uh, shape it. Now, if you want, you can uh, take tweezers and open the bottom here. You have a, a sort of a small mouth. Uh, I mean, I guess the bottom half of the beak for the kingfisher. If you want to put a fish in its mouth, you can uh, for display, but you don't have to. Uh, I mean, the fish has to be pretty light, right? So it could, it, it better be an origami fish. That's what would work best or just paper craft fish. That's not too big. So you have it like this, or you can just leave it into the top half of the beak and the beak is gonna stay closed. Then you can do the shaping again so that it's nice like this. Now, uh, this part is definitely going to be a bit tricky if you're not used to usual shaping and detailing. We're going to, this part is definitely easier with tweezers. Uh, pull, just take a bit of the flap and uh, fold it upwards while keeping the rest of that part down. like this. See, so it does kind of a wave like that. Same thing on the bottom part. So basically take it and then uh, with the tweezers, it's easier to take it. And you fold it downwards a bit to do that sort of wavy shape. So it does a round, sort of a circle in between both, uh, both of the flaps, like such. On this one, I think I nailed it a bit better, but that's up to you to think and how you would want to do it on your own model. Now you do it on this side. For this one, you have to make sure that it's symmetrical with the other because sometimes you can do it on a different uh, reference point and then you have one eye here and then on this side you have it a bit further forwards or back. So make sure that it's nice and symmetrical and that they're on the same spot on each side. It's okay if you accidentally flatten the beak. That's what I do all the time when I fold this. Um, you can fold it back afterwards. So it looks like this. Then you do the same thing with the bottom part. like this. Now you can uh, basically open this part again and then shape the beak again if you accidentally flattened it 
while doing that step. Now you can flatten the wings, make sure that they're nice and flat. You can add a bit of creases if you want uh, to make the effect of the feathers like, like that. The end nails it pretty well, but the middle not so much. If you want, you can even add an orange paper in the middle here to do the orange belly of the common kingfisher. Um, also, if you want to turn it into when it's flying, the only thing you have to change really is the head because it's kind of, this is when it's kind of, it's taking off. Uh, when, also, when it's sitting, you can fold the, the flaps here upwards so that it does like this. Um, you can just pull the head forwards. This part should unfold a bit, like such. And then you can fold this part down as well. So it's like this. I think on this one it's easier to show because it was in this position for longer. Like this. As opposed to when it's like this. And then you can put it on your display stand. It's a bit hard to balance sometimes, um, depending on what stand you use. Make sure it doesn't tip too far forwards. And it should be good. And now, there you have your origami common kingfisher. Hope you liked it. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you have anything to say about this model if you'll have any ideas of what you did to improve it or any instructions that you have you would have explained differently and uh bye see you next time